Acetaminophen, or paracetamol, often called Tylenol, is one of the most common medications taken. But because it is so common, many of us don't realize the danger this medication can pose. In this video, we'll go over its safe use as well as the consequences if you don't. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Eric Richardson, a board certified family practice physician. I'd like to welcome you to Family Med, a channel that focuses on giving you practical and accurate medical information to help you and your family. If you think this would be something that is helpful to you, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button, and follow along with us. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most common medications that we use to treat pain and fever. In the United States, as well as in some other countries, it's referred to as acetaminophen or Tylenol, but in other areas of the world, paracetamol. This is a medication that has been around for a long time. In fact, it was first developed in 1887, but wasn't really proven to be safe and used in any significant scale until the 1950s. But despite how long it's been around, we still don't have a definitive idea on how exactly it works. But overall, it's felt that when it's broken down in the body, certain parts of it are converted to chemicals that block the way the brain perceives pain. The most common uses of acetaminophen or paracetamol are to help in the treatment of pain as well as in the reduction of fever. The biggest benefit of Tylenol over all the other pain medication, including opioids and anti-inflammatories, is that when it's taken at proper doses, it's much safer. And this is key because when taken above the recommended doses, it can be very dangerous. The maximum recommended dose for an adult is 4,000 milligrams a day. To put that in perspective, your typical extra strength Tylenol is 500 milligrams per pill. So most people can take two tablets at a time up to four times a day. Now this is definitely something you should review with your pharmacist or doctor for your particular case, but on the short term, this is generally felt to be safe. Now for my patients, if they're needing to take it for any prolonged amount of time, I recommend that they stick to no more than 3000 milligrams a day. For children, we do it a little different. We base their dose upon their weight. So for infants under two months, I generally don't recommend that you give them any medication without consulting your doctor. It's not that they can't have it, it's just that infants under two months who have a fever need to be evaluated quickly by their doctor or in the emergency room. So it's best not to give medication for that except under the direct advice of your doctor. For infants over two months and children under 12 years, the typical recommended dose is 10 to 15 milligrams per kilogram of weight every four to six hours, with a max dose of 75 milligrams per kilograms per day, or one gram every four hours and four grams a day. Children over 12 usually can follow the same adult dosing. Okay, now when we talk about taking acetaminophen, it's important to remember that the recommended dose needs to take into account all different sources. Acetaminophen is put in many different medications. We find it in over-the-counter ones, as straight as the straight Tylenol, as well as different multi-symptom cold remedies. We also find it in over-the-counter sleep aids. As well as in prescription medications, there are several different types, especially ones that are used for pain, that also have it in it. These are playing things like oxycodone, hydrocodone, and codeine. Now, as well, common headache medications like Fioracet also contain it. So it's important to be aware of what kinds of medications you're taking when on Tylenol so you don't go over that maximum dose. If you're unsure, talk to your doctor or pharmacist and review what you're taking. The main reason we stress not going over the maximum dose of Tylenol is that it can be extremely toxic to the liver in the event of an overdose. Tylenol is processed through the liver. Now, when you take it too much, it can override the liver's ability to work and cause significant damage, leading to possible liver failure and in some cases, death. In severe cases, the only way to save somebody's life after this kind of damage is getting a liver transplant. So who needs to be most careful when taking acetaminophen? Well, really it's those who already have a compromised liver. There are those who have chronic liver disease like hepatitis C, cirrhosis, and especially those who drink a lot of alcohol. If you find yourself in these categories, then you really need to be careful and avoid taking it unless directed otherwise by your doctor. If you feel like you have taken too much Tylenol, contact your local poison control hotline or go to the emergency room as time is of the essence. There are medications that we can give that can help prevent damage to the liver from Tylenol, but to be most effective, it needs to be given within the first eight hours to have the best chance. The Tylenol overdose is not something that you wanna wait around on. Well, we focus a lot on the liver, mainly because that's the biggest concern we typically have with this medication. There are other things you should be aware of. In the past few years, there have been a requirement by the FDA to list the risk of certain severe skin reactions called Steven Johnson syndrome. There's also studies going on in relation to the risk of acetaminophen and potential for increasing children's risk to asthma. 
So far, it hasn't been felt to be anything that we need to be specifically concerned about, but as more studies are done, we may learn more. Well, we've discussed several things that can be concerning in regards to taking acetaminophen. But overall, this is still, for most cases, the safest medication that we have in trying to treat pain or fevers. You don't have the same problems with kidney damage, stomach ulcers, increased risk of heart disease that you can with anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen or naproxen. It's felt to be safe in children as well, as well as a preferred pain relief for women who are pregnant. So acetaminophen or paracetamol are great first line treatments for pain and fever. They aren't perfect and they have the limitations, but are a great thing for most people to try first when you need something for pain. So the main thing I want you to take from this video though, is a better understanding of why you need to avoid going over the maximum recommended dose. Well, I hope you found this information to be helpful. If so, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that like button and share it with your friends and family. And if your health is really important to you, consider subscribing and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our further content. Now don't go anywhere though, because if you're looking for other videos to help you in your health journey, go ahead and click either on this video or on this one, and it'll help you out. But until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson, and remember, take care of your body, because it's the only one you have.